We're going to start with a call to worship this morning. No? Orlando? There you go. I will read the the first part, and you guys can read the white part. We gather together in the presence of God, the creator of heaven and earth. We gather together in the name of Jesus. We gather together in the name of the Holy Spirit. This is our God. I'll just ask you to bow with me in opening prayer. I thank you, God, that you've brought us all together here safely this morning to worship again, take this day off and just put it towards you and the things we do, the things we learn for the coming week. I thank you that the Dredgers have come this morning to tell us about what's going on in the Ukraine, and that should be pretty interesting, I think. I just thank you for the others that are worshiping this day, too. Just protect their rights and freedoms that they are able to do that. Thank you for the things that you've given us and the things you've done for us this past week and the things we haven't realized you've even done for us. Just pray you'll be with us in this worship service, Lord. Just help us to take what we gain today and put it to use this week. Us this in your name. Amen. Okay, I have some opening scripture to read from Psalms 86, verses 8 to 13. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you. O Lord, they will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love toward me. So for those of you who might not know Otto and Florence very well, they've been involved with Peace Mennonite Church in Regina. Was it from the beginning or almost the beginning? From the beginning. Peace Mennonite Church is a home church, and it, uh, it, it, at this time it's, it uh, is in their house. As well as gathering for worship services, they and their congregational members have been involved in major outreach with refugees. They've hosted international visitors through Mennonite Central Committee's International Visitor Program, Exchange Program. They've been re involved in restorative justice and circles of support and accountability. And boy, if you want to hear them talk, just ask them about any of those things and you'll hear some really interesting stories. They've also worked in the Ukraine, and I'm not exactly sure. I know it's been many, many years. I, I don't know how the Florence Center started, but uh, that is something that has come out of their work there. They'll be telling us more later. The language that they worship in in their church is English, but they pray and they sing in many languages. And I read this on your site that Peace Mennonite Church participants are about 50% Anglo and 50% Asian and African. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful opportunity to worship in that kind of a setting. So it's so good to have you with us. Otto will be speaking now, like, like we announced earlier, lunch will be afterwards at the hall at 12.30, and then they'll share again at 1.30. The scripture that Otto invited me to, uh, us to uh, hear this morning is from Micah 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I'm going to invite Otto to come forward, and God bless you as you share with us. It's very good to be with you again. I think the very first time I came to this congregation was when I was attending Bible school in Rostron. And in the spring of that year, we visited all the various churches in Saskatchewan. That was in 1949. 
So uh, we've been connected up with this congregation for many, many years. It's always good to come back. <laughs> the theme that uh, in Micah is a very basic one. And I was also, it was also suggested that my theme today would be good. It would be good if my theme for today was love your enemies. And when the person was asking me, telling me, was saying that to me, uh, I, he said, well, is that okay? Well, I said, I always make reference to the, to the theme. So I will, of course, do that as well today. Basically, love is the basis of our uh, Christian faith. When Jesus was asked, what is by the Jewish Pharisees and uh, scribes? What is the most important uh, uh, law? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, he said, all the law and all the prophets are encapsulated in those two laws. So then, of course, the scribes and Pharisees said, who is my neighbor? And what did Jesus say? He gave the parable of the Good Samaritan. And when you look at the Good Samaritan parable, as all of you know that uh, by, uh, anyway, and if you look at the Sermon on the Mount, is where Jesus really explains and shares with us the meaning of love, of God, loving ourselves, and loving our neighbor. And our neighbor includes strangers. When in the Old Testament already, they said if, if strangers come into your midst or aliens come into your midst, treat them as citizens of your, com of your community. Um, <clears throat> So, neighbor includes strangers. It leads, it obviously includes family and our, our primary relationships. It also includes enemies. And when you look at Jesus' life, I like the song that you were saying, worship and work must be one. And that's what Jesus did. The Jews of that day, when they went from Galilee down to Jerusalem, they did not go through Samaria. They went over to the Jordan Valley, walked along the Jordan Valley Trail, and then came up at Jerusalem. They did not want to go through their enemy territory of the Samaritans. What did Jesus do? He went straight through Samaria with his disciples. And when they stopped and were going to have something to eat, when the disciples went to get something, he was sitting at the well. And a Samaritan woman came to get some water. And, and he talked to the Samaritan woman. It was unusual for a man to speak to a woman in those days, let alone a strange woman. But he talked to a Samaritan woman, asked her for water. That is putting love of the enemy into context. What else did he do? When a centurion from the Roman army asked him to heal his daughter, what did he do? He healed the, the uh, centurion uh, centurion's daughter. Worship and love is not just a theory. Worship or love is an action word. Thank you. Love is an action word and Jesus demonstrated that action in spades. So when Jesus says love is the basis for the law and love is the basis for the, for the, of the prophets. 
He translated that into action. How do we translate love into action? In our personal lives? In our community? In our province and nation? And internationally? My hearing is not very good, so I can't, uh, can't hear very well how you will respond. But I'd like to get some of you to make comments. And how do you do that? Okay. As we keep thinking about it and make some observations uh, as we continue on. One of the things that, that we as Christian communities, whether they are Mennonite or United or Catholic or Lutheran, is service. Mennonite Central Committee was established pretty well 100 years ago when there was great famine and tragedy in Ukraine. That was 100 years ago. MCC is one of our arms in terms of working around the world. The Catholic Church has, a, has also a charity, a charity organization that does the same. United Church, the Lutheran Church, all the various churches are involved locally, nationally, and internationally in various ways of helping. <clears throat> when you look at, at 100 years ago, when MCC went to, uh, to Ukraine, now it is 100 years later, and the tragedy there is, 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 uh, is again, a tra tragedy even worse than it was at that time. Lucy uh, Romanenkova, with whom we work in Ukraine, and we'll hear more about that this afternoon, she, is, was, she was with us for six months. When, she was, when, when we talked, and many of the people in Ukraine say, we hate the Russians for all they are doing to us. But she always said it with a very deep sadness because she said, we cannot hate even though knowing what the Russians are doing to our country. So hate is not the basis for, uh, for living. It is love. Another example that I have is uh, one time in our Bible study, we had a for a period of time, we had a person who was from Japan uh, worshiping with us. His name was Taka. And he often came to, uh, to, us, uh, to me afterwards to discuss some of the th observations we were making. And one of them was with regard to peace. And uh, I said to him, you know, how do you destroy an enemy? And he said, of course, you kill him. Well, I said, another alternative is to make him your friend. And then you have destroyed the enemy without destroying the body. That was an entirely new concept for him. Because in his tradition, that aspect of relating to an enemy was not part of their culture. Any, any observations about how do you trans translate love into action? Worship together? Pra worship together? Other ways? Forgive. Pardon? Forgive. 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 Put, put some uh, meat on that. What? How do you give me experiences about how you forgive, how you, how you have forgiven, or how you have been forgiven? Pardon? Slander. Slander. Yeah. I remember when I was uh, 
a teenager. When you have a teenager, you often have good friends, but you also have people that you don't really like very much. And I found that uh, praying for the person that you don't like. And I also found that connecting up and having discussions with the person that you don't like. Developing a relationship with people that are not so don't like. Uh, other, other observations? Yeah, re befriending people. I also heard when you were doing, uh, re requesting prayer, uh, prayer, uh, prayer requests, requ request for praying for the homeless, looking at the issues that we have in our communities. How do we relate to each other? Relationships, the servant stance, action local in the neighborhood in the world in the congregation in worship in the community and internationally this is our commitment as christians to follow jesus in terms of loving god and loving our neighbor as ourselves which is inclusive of everyone The challenge for all of us is to be sensitive to the needs of others and to find ways of intercession, of reconciliation, of communication, and of confidence. Amen. Thank you, Otto. When you were talking about forgiveness, was reminded of two different situations in my own life. One where I made, I've really tried hard to, I can do this very easily, but make a flippant comment. And it just so happened that it was to my brother-in-law. And I didn't even know that he was, he was very, very upset until my sister told me. And uh, yeah, going to him and feeling so bad and yet listening to hear how that had affected him and then the joy of forgiveness and our that was a number of years ago and I love my brother-in-law dearly I just spent a week with them and, and what a wonderful time but knowing that how something like that can can divide and as I think of I think of ones that I've known out throughout the years where families are divided and my heart breaks so <coughs> Let's pray together. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your love poured out upon us. For what you have done for us when we didn't deserve it. Your love shown to us. Freely forgiving us. Lord, I think of so many stories in the Bible where Jesus fed the crowds where he reached out and touched those that no one else would touch. And he called the blind man that everyone was ignoring to come. Lord, help us. I pray you will open our eyes as we go about our activities day by day to see beyond um, what is just right in front of us, but to see those who are hurting, those who are in need. and be able to reach out and show that love to them. I pray too, O oh God, that our worship and our work may be one as we live our lives for you. As we head over to the hall for further discussion and to eat together, I just pray you will bless that time together. I thank you that you go ahead of us, Holy Spirit, as we go into this next week. Pray that you will give us those opportunities to share with those around us in our words and in our actions. Father, I thank you that as you have blessed us, that we may be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to give a benediction for this part of our day. 
but we will be continuing on after this. As we leave this place, may we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, in whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He will teach us to act justly, to love mercy, and to serve our God in humility with all our body, our mind, and strength as the Holy Spirit guides our steps along the, the way. Go now in peace and joy to serve the Lord and your neighbour. Amen. <laughs>